Without presidential immunity from criminal prosecution, there can be no presidency as we know it. What was up with the pardon for President Nixon? So I think it's exactly the opposite, Justice Alito. That's official? Yes. Why would that be official? That answer sounds to me as though it's like, yeah, under my test, it's an official act. But that sure sounds bad, doesn't it? Hello and welcome to Hello. our special Supreme Court yep. Oral Arguments episode. It's not a logical fallacy. Our bonus episode, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. uh, there was yeah. no way we were going to fit this into a regular episode. Uh, no. And this was, um, the, the well, this was the last day of term for the Supreme Court. They were normally, uh, on the last day of term in British schools, we'd normally take in games or, games and records. or watch a DVD. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but they decided that they would hear about in oral arguments for immunity. <laughs> for, um... Yeah, I think it's the equivalent, isn't it? Yeah, of, yeah. You know, let's have a listen. Yeah, keep us amused. It's the day before. We're all a bit demob happy. Uh-huh. Yeah, just amuse us with some, you know, wheel in a, 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 a strange kind of jester yeah. that would dance in front of us and say things that might make us laugh. Yeah. And, uh, and sure enough, uh, John Sauer... <laughs> Popped in and did his best Davros, Lord of the Daleks impression throughout. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, and it, it kind of does it, it, does, it, does, <laughs> it doesn't start off like that. But as he's talking, all of the the tonality uh, kind of leaches out, and he's just left with timbre. So it kind of <laughs> it's a bit. It becomes more Dalek like. Um, well, he starts just kind lo- of. Um... <laughs> He starts enthusiastic because he's reading his little yeah. prepared statement thing. Yeah. Um, ju- which basically the thrust of is, we've always given immunity to presidents. You're being yeah. crazy if you think that presidents aren't immune. That's always been a thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, then, and the then, judges and are like, And he lists no. a whole bunch of cases <laughs> where, okay, yeah. yeah, there were things that were brought against them. That, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, and said, everybody's going, <sighs> Nixon, yeah. really? Did yeah. You really there's some that? weird yeah. examples used on both sides, I think. Um yeah. and, and when I say on both sides, I mean by by the Conservative justices and by Sauer. Mm. Um mm. which appear at, at times to be making a certain point of like, you know, obviously this would be illegal, but actually that's almost never the point they're making. It's almost yeah. always no, oh, you know, we can't stop FDR from interning Japanese prisoners. That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking yeah. when you're listening to, oh, oh, obviously they they understand that was bad. No, no, they don't yeah. understand that was bad. No, no. <laughs> that, that's they, the, they, not they the point they're you. making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that, it's it is. Um, so they kind of join in with the with the distracting. <laughs> You know, small shaky device on a stick, but they're just shaking. And go look, this is obviously <laughs> illegal. We wouldn't allow that. And then, or or if we if we did bring in, if we didn't bring in this rule, we would have to hold people to account for doing these things, and we wouldn't want that to happen. Yeah. So you're distracted momentarily by the little model of the shaky jester on a stick, and you go, oh yeah, no, that's right. Whilst the whilst the other. Um, uh, members of the Supreme Court are, are saying, "Hang on, hang on a minute. Wait, <laughs> what? Wait, wait. That's not what this. That's not the point. The point is, actually, yes. And and the the thing I was kind of looking forward to listening to this stuff about the question of immunity that has never been asked by any other president other than Trump." But then, you know, got somewhat disheartened by Dev Ross's voice. But that, but just that consideration that. The only reason this has come to pass is because the thinness of Trump's plausible deniability vis-a-vis everything he said about the, the election being overturned and motivating his loyal slash armed supporters to go do something about it. And he's always couched that in language that could be be seen possibly in a court of law to be not saying what he's saying. And it's got to a court of law. Finally, the, the, um, you know, Jack Smith has seen through the emperor's new clothes and said, yes, what you did there was highly illegal. So they've had to say, ah, well, uh, uh, yeah, but a president is immune, isn't he? 
yeah, no, no, because fairly early on, they, they, everyone agrees that no one's above <laughs> the law. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Except, Sauer is conceding yeah. quite a lot in doing that because their position mm. was absolute immunity. Yeah. Um, in fact, the question they um, they put to the court was, uh, you know, the, the doctrine of, of of absolute immunity for official acts, which is not a doctrine. Um, and right. they they were like, you know, how this does this mean that he can't be prosecuted for the things that they're trying to prosecute him for? And the court yep. narrowed the question. Um, yeah. And they basically said, we're just going to look at official acts. It's not going to, we're not talking about a, immunity for private acts in any way. Right. So, but, but, but the original one was like, you can't prosecute a president, which goes, which is exactly opposite to what he was saying when he made the case that, um, well, in fact, he's still making the case. This is still one of their defences is double jeopardy, saying that if you've been in, right. he's he says first of all you can't be convicted uh, in a you can't be tried in a court unless you've already been impeached and convicted by the Senate in an impeachment in in like when you're president. Oh right, and, okay. But also, yep. he was impeached for some of this stuff. So so double jeopardy is attached. You know, jeopardy is attached. You can't try it again for these things. Uh-huh. Right? No. Uh-huh. Huh? No. Uh-huh. Those you, two yeah, things you can't are have one as a condition for the other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that <laughs> <laughs> we want the uh, we want the other judge from the other the Stormy Daniels case <laughs> to be kind of step in and yeah. say you're beginning to lose all credibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're yeah. not even addressing the double jeopardy thing because that's clearly on nonsense. I mean, the immunity thing is clearly nonsense. Anyway, the, this is the thing. Yeah. The, the court should never have taken this up. The, the, no. This was addressed by Tanya Turkin in the district court and when she was like, obviously he doesn't have immunity, that would be insane. And then mm-hmm. that was appealed to the circuit court uh, who said, yeah, obviously he doesn't have immunity. Yeah. That would be insane. <laughs> that would be insane. And, yeah. And so... Uh, now the Supreme Court uh, should have just gone, well, yeah, obviously he doesn't have immunity. That would be yeah. insane. We agree with the yeah. lower court. and But they took it and they said, okay, we'll just address the official act thing. And right. um, basically all they've, all they've done and all they're going to do is delay it because yeah. what, what short, like very long story short... What they're going mm-hmm. to end up doing is find some way of giving some official acts immunity, like officially, um, right. and then remand it to the, to the district court to to decide which of the alleged acts had right. some were, official component and which right. were purely private. And that right. has to happen before a trial can then continue. Right. Because obviously that will be a, a, whatever a... Uh, decision Tanya Chutkin comes back with about which acts are official and which acts are private will be appealed. That will then get That'll appealed, go to the, yeah. the oh, circuit court sake. and yeah. then that will go back yeah. to the Supreme Court. So it's, it yeah. means it's not going to yeah. happen until after the election, essentially, yeah. which was the whole point just... of this. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, and the, and the, nobody, uh, you know, who do you, where is the court that holds the Supreme Court to account? That's, yeah, there isn't one. Nobody can. There isn't one. They are you supreme. Know, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the name. You know, that's kind of you. You think okay, is nobody calling out the Supreme Court saying, "Do you, we can see what you're doing? You're just delaying this so that yeah. if Trump gets back in, he will pardon himself." I think technically or, Diana Ross can tell the Supremes what to do, but but nobody yeah. else. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but then it's probably only stop in the name of love. Yeah, that's all um, she can tell him. Tell him to do. Yes, <laughs> I suspect that was the three degrees. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to look that up now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, this was two hours and 40 minutes of um, oral arguments, which is, I mean, it's a very long time to be discussing a case this obvious. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah. A, it's a long time for, for oral arguments at the Supreme Court. Until the pandemic, they tended to be an hour long. In fact, right. this was scheduled for an hour, um, mm-hmm. uh, but it went on. A bit, and the reason for that is a bit of a quirky thing of of Supreme Court history, because the system used to be that they would have uh, each person, you know, presenting the defence and the prosecution mm. would have um, two minutes to kind of make an open, opening statement, and then twenty eight minutes of questioning from the justices. Right, and yeah. um, so that gets over in an hour. But when COVID came along, 
the Supreme Court couldn't meet in person. And so they did phone oral arguments, mm-hmm. um, which meant they were basically all on a conference call. And because yep. on a call you can't see each other and kind of there's a potential for talking over each other and, and all that kind of stuff, they yeah. came up with a new system for the questioning. And, and they did a thing called Siar- seriatim questioning, which is where they do it in order of seniority. So they start with Justice Thomas okay. and go all the way through to the the newest, they which just, in this case is Ketanji Brown yeah. Jackson. Yeah. And um, so... When they came back after COVID, they went back to the original kind of hour, you know, two, two minutes and then 28 minutes of questioning for each. But yeah. they thought, well, this is yeah. Siri Artem questioning. That's quite good. Let's keep that. So they did that. that. They added yeah. that on as well. So right. that's what we so, end up with is each each person. We first get John Sauer doing his two minutes. He gets 28 minutes yeah. of kind of open questions. And then yeah. they de- take it in turns to see if they've, you know, each one has any more questions, right? Right, and so then they do the same thing with the hour, is it? With Dreven, no, obviously for the, for the defense, right? Yeah, yeah. for the uh, prosecution, yeah, 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 the people. So the people, yes, yeah, yeah. So we get a bit of chaos at the beginning, and then we get some kind yeah. of more structured questions. But those questions don't get to build on each other in the same way, unless you happen to want to ask something about what the the judge just before you asked. Oh, right. Um, okay. So, yeah. the like, the old the the judges with more seniority won't then get to question the stuff that has come back from the questions that the judges with less seniority. So it's all a bit. It seems like a weird system now that they're all back yeah. in the same room again. Yeah, because you could easily, you know, and it's not like Zoom didn't give you the option to see everybody. Oh, they don't do. Up. They don't do video. No. They hate. They will not accept being on video. They are very pic- uh, camera shy and yeah. Uh, yeah so they they only did audio they only release audio um recordings of everything they don't have cameras in the courtroom and they d- they wouldn't do it on zoom so idiots yeah yeah but so <laughs> that's right because you know it doesn't say the founding fathers never used video absolutely so yeah we're it's not, not in the bible is it so not uh, in the bible <laughs> no zoom yeah yeah exactly no yeah. Um, <laughs> and you shall change your background to a blurry yeah. one. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 That's, that's right. So, <laughs> so thou shalt not use uh, cat a dog filters. face. <laughs> yeah, cat filters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh-huh. allow your uh, babysitter to come in the background and grab the uh-huh. children. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. apart from the fact that we've always been at war with. Um, with prosecuting presidents uh, in Sauer's opening statement, he also said he, yeah. he kept calling crimes controversial decisions. He kept went because he was <laughs> what he was saying was we yeah. can't allow presidents to be imprisoned to be tried and imprisoned for their most controversial decisions. Yeah, uh, at which point I'm like, well, no, but crimes, yes. That's, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. But yeah, his argument is that it's just that if you let presidents be prosecuted for crimes then any time anyone makes a decision anyone's unhappy with they're just going to go right yeah. well let's put him in prison for that so yeah. we can't have that yeah. that'd be terrible so yeah yeah we, yes exactly which isn't which is just trump like overstating bombast yeah for 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 moving it way up the other end the yeah. other end of the scale just because Richard Nixon <laughs> recorded absolutely everybody, we shouldn't be holding him to account for that. Because <laughs> what about it, people getting killed in wars? We should do all that. Oh, that was the other outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little You're bit trying to be hyperbolic. It, like I can tell. Yeah. But but all of these things are things the, the conservative justice was like. In it, well, yep. Kavanaugh stood up for Nixon basically, and and yeah. the, the others were talking about um, Obama drone strikes and and stuff. Yeah, and <laughs> and also um, uh, Biden saying well, Biden could be potentially charged with unlawfully inducing immigrants to enter yeah. the country yeah. illegally for his border policies. Like, well, that's a little <sighs> bit of a Trump like. But in Twitter his, tweets, in his defence, Sauer is saying he can't be charged this not you know he uh, hasn't right. you can't prosecute him for that 
even though it's right. probably yeah. a crime. You can't do it. That, yeah. No. Yeah. And you shouldn't be allowed to. It's right there. We could yeah. have used that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so Justice Thomas said, uh, where does this um, immunity come from? Mm. And Sauer's answer to that, his full answer is the executive vesting clause, which is mad. The executive right. vesting clause uh, says in its entirety, I don't, I'm not, not, I'm doing this off the top of my head, it's not going to be word for word, but it's um, executive power is vested in a president of the United States. That's it. That's all right. it says. That's it. Yeah. So oh. he's, he's assuming okay. executive power includes yep. immunity, which is a complete circular argument. He's starting from the fact that it means immunity, and then he's saying, and, and, and where we get the immunity is from that clause. Because it, it says he gets executive power. So, yeah. And, <laughs> and Kavanaugh kind of makes the same argument later on, because he, he kind of is trying to make it a bit legaler, and says, right. um, you know, we've got an executive um, privilege that comes from the executive mm. vesting clause, and that's not like specifically enumerated in the clause. We've kind of made an assumption that that's part that the executive privilege is a thing. So, yeah, executive immunity probably is well, too. It it's the same, dead. basically. It's a, yeah. Just because we haven't thought of it doesn't mean it's not there, <laughs> yeah. not been there. It also you doesn't know, mean it is there. Yeah. But, no, yeah. that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yes. But that's yeah, his he's, he's he's positing that notion of mathematics as being a thing that exists, and we just discover yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's a world We've of just never that before. exists. We've just not looked in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. We've just not applied our brains, our uh, brain in the in the correct manner. Like yeah. like Kavanaugh continues to demonstrate that he isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So Justice Chief Justice Roberts asks yep. about um, bribes because bribes is one of the one mm -hmm. things that that um, it does specifically mention the president in saying he can't do that you're not allowed to do bribes um, right. which is ironic given how many bribes Trump was involved in <laughs> but um, yep. yeah it's it, that's that's one of the the one kind of actual specifically there's a clear statement as Kavanaugh will say again and again about the president being included in that crime and yeah. and so Robert says okay what about if you've got if you appoint an ambassador which is a core role of the president's mm -hmm. part of his executive thing. power yeah yeah but yeah. you do it in exchange for a bribe that's not mm -hmm. allowed so how do you get around that and Sauer says uh well you have to expunge the official act of appointing the ambassador from that's an from doing being, you can right. you can indict them for the bribe but you but you can't say any literally he gets questioned about this by uh, alito later who who says all right well you know what do you do with that you can't if you're expunging it basically that's not in that's any the, way effective unless you that's half can, the bribe that's yeah the, unless you that's don't the point say that's anything how you about, would say this is the bribe <laughs> yeah yeah if you don't say anything about the fact that he appointed an ambassador at all in the case then yeah. then, then that's the only way you can get around it and he's like yep yeah you have to do that yeah and the, and uh -huh. then, even the conservative but, but justices are like that doesn't make any yeah. sense this is <laughs> no, madness don't make sense. because how do you Okay, so there, where did this million dollar come? Million dollars come from? Yeah. Oh, it came from that guy over there. Oh, okay. What you mean, the ambassador for? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. It came from him, right, and it came before he became the ambassador. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it. it I did. mean, I don't. You oh, wouldn't okay. even be allowed to talk about him me, making someone an ambassador, though. That's the thing, because no. it's an official yeah. act. Whereas, obviously, uh, yeah. um, as I think, is it? It's either, I think it might be Sonia Sotomayor later who says, this is nonsense. What you would do is talk about the ambassador, talk about the, the bribe, and then say to the jury, use it, do it in jury instructions, you, you can't find him guilty of, of appointing an ambassador. That's fine. He was allowed to do that. He's being put on trial for Found the bribe. Yes. Yeah. 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 In the same That's way as, you as speech, yeah. you're allowed to say lots of different yeah. stuff. You can't 
Yeah. And you can't prosecute someone for what they say. But if what they say is fraudulent and they use it to to rob a bank for, or or yeah. convince someone to invest in something that they know is not true, that bit that bit's not allowed. Yeah. But or you have convince to convince people that the yeah that the the election has been rigged. Yeah. But yes. you have to be yeah. allowed to say that they said stuff. And in yeah. court, you say we're not prosecuting for him, him for his words. We are doing it for this specific part where the words enabled him to commit a crime. <laughs> yeah, the crime bit. Yeah, so you can't just take out the context. Yeah, you can't. Did not mention the context. How? Oh, it's just another dodgy Trump lawyer. Is it how? I mean, he's just. It's, if you're if you're presenting this stuff, he's got so to little to work court. with. That's the problem. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and he does all that kind of making it sound a bit more legaler by mentioning lots of cases. Oh, he cites lots of cases, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what you do, because he's seen TV courtroom dramas, yeah. dramas, and that's what you do. You just come up with a bunch of names, put verses in the middle, and a, and a <laughs> random date at the end, <laughs> and uh, that convinces the viewing public. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the, the jury, you get a cutaway of the, of the jurors or the... Uh, the members on the bench and they're all nodding and then stroking their chins and going, oh yeah, right, this guy really knows what he's talking about. <laughs> well, as an example of that, we get a question from Justice Sotomayor uh, asking, is assassinating a political rival an official act? Mm -hmm. Would that be allowed? Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, basically his answer is, could be. It would depend <laughs> on the, the details. Which is, which is, I don't think what she was expecting as the answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, so she, sa she says, essentially, you know, intent is important. And the, the idea of, you know, why he was doing, if he had someone killed because he, because they were his political rival and he wanted to win the election or whatever. Yeah. That seems like not a great thing. And yeah. That seems like and the context, so, yes. Yeah, and Sauer is saying that, uh, this is where he mentions uh, Fitzgerald v. Nixon for the first time, I think. Yeah. Might be the first time he says it. He's, this is the one he brings up the most. Uh, yeah. And Fitzgerald versus Nixon, first of all, it's a civil case. Um, right. So, so it's basically got nothing to do with criminal law. Um, mm -hmm. But it's where they were looking at um, the... Uh, whether you can be civilly sued for official acts that you take as a president. Right. Because yep. the, uh, it's actually Nixon versus Fitzgerald rather than Fitzgerald versus Nixon, if you want to look it up. Yep. But um, yep. essentially this was a the case of a, a US Air Force airman who um, lost his job and, and wanted to sue Nixon because it was Nixon's fault that the Air Force had, had made the changes that resulted in him losing his job. Right. And and it was appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court who said yeah. lots of stuff that the president does affects people. That's kind of his job. Right. He can't do yeah. that stuff if he's constantly worrying about all of those people suing him. Right. So you can't sue the president for stuff he does as part of his official acts. It's just not a thing you're allowed to do. Right. So Yeah. Um but John Sauer is relying on that in yeah. saying that that's his argument and his strongest one. It's shit, but that's as strong as it gets. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. his argument that all official acts are immune. You can't prosecute a president for an official act because in that they found that you can't case, just like any, you can't just have any citizen suing him all the time. Um, and right. even then, it doesn't stop people suing the president even while he's president for. Uh, for private acts, because um, Clinton right. v. Jones, yeah. he he was sued for stuff he said about Paula Jones, and um, and in yep. fact Trump was sued by E. Jean Carroll while yep. he was president for defaming her. Yep. yep. Um, and in fact, for a while he was he got the um, Department of Justice to defend him on that. <laughs> wow. So, under the on the basis that it was the. A, as an attempt no, to make I mean, it a, an offic official he was thing? arguing it was an official act and therefore couldn't wow. be wow um yeah he said it was basically he he made i mean he never really made an argument about it but he repeatedly said no. that it was an official act and he should and you can't sue people you know presidents but, for official acts in when they're, when they're uh, defaming you know, people was, yeah, def <laughs> yeah he's defaming her yeah so yeah 
Um, so that's the, yeah. Nick, Nixon versus Fitzgerald is his, is his main argument for why, if it's an official wow. act, it's fine. And so what he was saying was that the Supreme Court was very uh, clear in Nixon versus Fitzgerald that, that the president is immune for official acts, immune from civil liability, not from criminal prosecution. Um, right. And right. and so um, if assassinating a political rival was done in his official capacity <laughs> then yeah yeah so, then he's then he couldn't be yeah 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 fair enough and and doesn't he go on to argue that it would be an impediment to his ability to do his official acts yeah yeah if people people constantly um uh, scrutinized the motives behind what he was doing yeah, I mean, and that's our, that's the problem that he runs into with Nixon versus Fitzgerald is is that yeah. it doesn't delineate official acts from private acts uh, in a completely objective way. It does look at intent. Yeah, and yeah, um, and and especially when you're looking at um, what another one that Sotomayor brings up, which is uh, absolute versus qualified immunity, where where people who are doing their jobs and need to make difficult decisions when they do their jobs, mm -hmm. like policemen yep. and certain other uh, people, they have qualified immunity, which means that if they were doing their job to the best of their ability, essentially, and something goes wrong and yep. they end up doing something that would otherwise be a crime, maybe, yep. um, like killing someone, often, if it's a policeman, uh, yeah. then, then they are immune. Um, unless they were doing something wrong, if they were, if they yeah. knew they were committing a crime and, and doing yeah. a thing of a part of their job they weren't allowed to do, or if they were being negligent yeah. or whatever, that, yeah, yeah. So if they were not actually, absolute if, immunity, yeah, if yeah. they were liable for their, you know, they are liable for their actions. Yeah. If they, but if they follow them uh, to the official letter. Yeah. then they have qualified immunity. If they they are, their liability extends to, if things go wrong, then they are personally liable. Yeah, and so that was For, what, that was the argument. The, yeah. That was the yeah. argument that, that essentially, I want I would say the conservative justices and the liberal justices, but actually this broke down to the male justices and the female justices, because Amy Coney Barrett was ah. was pretty much on the side of the three liberal justices. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, pretty strongly, in fact. And so that's how really it broke down. It wasn't quite as clear as conservative and liberal. Ah, so, okay. But it, unfortunately, that still means it's 6-3. So, yeah. um, and, and to be fair, Roberts, because he doesn't do this, the questioning during Syriatum questioning, he, he didn't say as much, so it's not quite as clear where he stood on stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's prob probably 5-4 or 6-3, but either way. It's not going to go well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I said, I'm it's six. It would be six three if Amy Coney Barrett was on their side. So it's it's it could arguably be five four in favour of not giving him any additional immunity. But Roberts, I don't think is going to go that way. I think he is going to go right. the, the the way of the other conservatives. So yeah, the other the other case that they were looking at. Um, yeah. In terms of the um, the official acts versus private acts, is mm. one called Blazing Game, which yeah. is the um, it's a a police officer I think who um, sued Trump for his part in right. in the January sixth and on behalf yeah. of <coughs> excuse me I'm saying oh like yes Sauer. that's right dude um, you got so, yeah. Blazing yeah. Game was uh, was a police officer who was who was injured and uh, like held Trump responsible for part of that, yep. and yep. so part of the decision in that was a more objective test for deciding what's an official act and what's an unofficial act, and a lot of that fell down on the fact that most of what Trump did with regard to January sixth was in his capacity as a candidate seeking office, right? Not as a and president yes. holding office. <clears throat> yeah, so so they couldn't be counted as official yeah. presidential acts. They so, were. Um, yeah. Yeah. so Sauer rests on that quite a lot and keeps saying that they agree with the holding in Blazing Game, and um, the the reason he does that, I think, is because if you if you kind of lump the private acts towards stuff that only a candidate does, 
mm-hmm. and the official acts or anything a president does, yeah. then yeah. Um, then it's easier to kind of make the case that some of the more of the things that he did, which actually were crimes, well, were official acts. Um, right. and, yeah. and, and the yeah. other thing about the uh, Fitzgerald Nixon versus Fitzgerald one is that it defined because it's trying to minimise the civil liability of of the president so that he can't be sued by everyone. It it takes a very wide view of what um, his official acts are for that right. for that civil protection. Um, yeah. yeah, and so it's basically it, it talks about the the. Um, wide peripheral or the edges of the periphery of what um what a president needs to do essentially uh, all of that stuff is official acts so if it's essentially in any way plausibly something that a president might need to do then it should be considered right. an official act and and again that was when they were looking at specifically civil liability and protecting the president from being sued for everything he does whereas yeah yeah what but don't he, they don't they wasn't there an argument over the word plausible as well there was an argument over plausible when alito used it to say that right. it wouldn't be plausible that sealed that that if a president ordered seal team 6 to assassinate a political rival yeah it, yep. that wouldn't be it wouldn't be plausible to assume that that would then be carried out was what he was saying he said that seal team 6 are under the the um uh, UCMJ, the the I can't remember yep. what it's called, Uniform Code of Military Uniform. Justice. Yeah, um, yep. and uh, so they are required not to follow illegal orders. So it's yep. fine if the president tells them to do something illegal because they won't do it. We don't need to right. worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, interesting because the the same uh, kind of code of conduct applies to civil service yeah. in the UK and. Parts of the uh, acts of sending people to Rwanda is contravenes some of the laws that are adopted in English law, from uh, which in fo- both informed and are received from the European Court of Human uh, European Court of Human Rights. Um, so, if they so some of the yeah, so the civil servants have been specifically instructed to ignore those ignore those bits. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that. Because if you're, you know, you you won't get sued for breaking the law and their civil servants are going, hang on a minute, you've just determined, you've just made it law that this is safe, but doing these acts are illegal. You've just made up a law yeah. by just saying, we, we yeah, we can murder people because we, because we can. So, so they're not doing it. And then, because, so if the, if it, yeah, it is plausible that Trump is certainly is plausible that Trump <laughs> would order SEAL Team Six to, to surreptitiously kill one of his rivals, and and then he and he wants to be immune from that. He wants to be immune from everything he does. Absolutely, That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. He's he he bit like Trump, a bit like Trump, a bit like Boris Johnson, is not beholden. Thinks he's not beholden to the network of. Uh, uh, truths and um, obligations that, that that tie the rest of us, bind the rest of us together. Yeah. He thinks he ought to be able to do absolutely everything because he is, you know, the Messiah, God's King. Yeah, he's 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 the second coming that QAnon have been spouting about. So he ought, yeah, of course I can do that. Of course I can. And yeah, I could shoot somebody on the streets of New York, New York, and get away with it. This is this is the this is him, the 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 uh, ultimate logical conclusion of him saying, "I can do anything I like because I've been yeah, turned yeah. into a celebrity. I've I been mean, made he's, this." He but... said that in pretty much those words <laughs> um, yeah, several yeah. times. Apart from when you're a celebrity, they let you do it. Um, he's, yeah, he yeah. said, "I I've got Act Two. I've got Act Two, and that means I can do whatever I like." Mm. And. Th- that that's and that's uh, do you think that's the only reason he ever ran for president because he believed that he article would two, be sorry. therefore I mean, immune from uh, um, he would be there therefore do you want to say that again then? no <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i've got article two is what he said basically um, yeah which include which is part of which is the executive vesting clause incidentally so 
Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah, so he's he's always wanted to be president in order to be able to, when people said, uh, uh, oh, yeah, do you want to run for president? Well, nah, that'd be daft. Yeah, yeah, all right then. And then, because, well, you'd be immune from absolutely everything you've ever done in your entire life. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah I'll do that then. And now it turns out he's not, because there are a couple of cases that, you know, the, the Fitzgerald run and the Blazing Game case, and you think, well, that's about it. So now this is the, the test case. That's the scary stuff about this is that what's to prevent the next Al, Al Capone, the next Don um, Don Trumpone, <laughs> what, what's to prevent the next one thinking, oh, well, right, I will run for president now. Because yeah, I mean. Got, got me immunity. I don't think. Oh, the way it's playing out, this is. um. The first, the, a kind of like a test case that is test that is asking this question, but this question mm. isn't really a question. It's it's very mm. clearly he's not immune from things. Yeah. That's always the way it's been. In fact, um, Judge Jackson argued that um, when uh, Sarah said that um, Fitzgerald versus Nick, Nixon versus Fitzgerald is about. Um, the, the official acts versus private acts. And and part of the reason it was so broad is because you could make an allegation of improper purpose about anything. Like, whatever mm-hmm. he did, you could set, you could claim that he did it for improper means or, per, you know, private means. So we can't yeah. use that as, an, as a basis for whether he can be prosecuted. It can't be about intent. And Jackson said, well, it can be alleged... But then mm. you have to prove, yeah, that that those were that was the intent, and yeah, and that, um, you know, it's not just it's not enough just to say you can't use that you can't use intent. Intent is important, and the and the threat of prosecution for, uh, for all yeah. acts really, like yeah. official acts if they're if they're really bad and you knew what you were yeah. doing in it and yeah. you like went against the decision of your attorney general or things like that but but yep. all private acts certainly um that's been the status quo that is the status quo for all presidents and one of the ways we mm. know that is because they as ford pardoned nixon and he yes. wouldn't have needed yeah, yeah. to do that if presidents yeah. were immune so even as recently yeah. as that we've yeah. known um yeah and and there's no reason there's nothing that suggests we didn't know before that that, that yeah. presidents are if they don't do the right thing and that thing that they end up doing is a crime, then yeah. they're they're liable to prosecution. They're liable for prosecution, and yes. And the fact the fact that you know you, uh, it's a bit of a whine to, to, and a whinge to say, oh, well, you, you've got to, yeah, you've got to, you can't just say, oh, well, you know, we're suspicious of your intent of appointing this ambassador. <laughs> um, compared with that on exactly the same day your bank account went up by a million dollars we were a little bit suspicious and it came from the same ambassadors offshore yeah, yeah. holding company so we're a little bit suspicious we think there might have been some sort of intent oh no well you can't bring intent into the thing how else would you <laughs> would you how else would you spot a crime yeah it was trump's intention to overthrow the result of the election that we know that, and there's been an an immense, you know, the January six committee went through an, an an extraordinary amount of evidence to prove that that intent existed. Yeah. So that it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't enough to just say you intended to over because because he Trump said no, I didn't. And they go, oh, all right then. That's all right yeah. then. Yeah, because you're a trustworthy guy. So you, yes, it's always been the case that that's how you bring yeah, things absolutely. to court. Of course court it is. And Sotomayor says like, that yeah. later on. She says says that we need you know you you lay out all of the acts that people took, whether they were official or private, and and by looking at them as a whole, you can infer their intent and whether that yeah. they were doing it for private means or public means. Yeah. And and yeah. so that's why we need to also include all the official stuff when prosecuting him for the private stuff. It needs to need to be able to yep. say, here are the acts he took. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, certainly for bribery, for example, the, the thing that makes it illegal, if you're an official, to take a bribe to do an official act, is that you did the official act. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes, as a result of uh, privately benefiting. Yeah. Yes, cash cash for questions. People very, can many... give, give you money. That's yeah, not illegal. Yeah. No. You can but do official do things. For the, it's yes, like prostitution. Yeah. It's it's yeah. prostitution is all about timing. You you can right. give you can give <laughs> people money. That's fine. They can yeah. have sex with you. That's fine too. There yeah. are no laws against either of those things. But when For, the, when they happen very close together, together, it's against the law. One as a result. When there's a causal connection <laughs> that's identifiable, that bit's against the law. Yeah. Well, there's that famous. Peter Sellers sketch in the uh, set in the House of Parliament where the, he's playing an MP who's, stat- who's just saying all the things <laughs> in between statements that MPs say. He, he says nothing. He does his speech about five minutes long. And there's one heckle from the back. Says, what about the prostitution bill? <laughs> and he says, pay it, you fool. Pay it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yes, that's the whole thing that, that, You've got to, yes, if you're having, that's how you spot corrupt officials, <laughs> isn't it? So there were several um, politicians in Thatcher's government in the 80s who had to resign because they had received money yeah. in brown envelopes f- to give people Jeffrey access Archer to was on, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Spent time in prison, in two. fact. As a result, yeah. yes. Of of doing corrupt things, a, an official act of bestowing access to various um, ministers or various uh, uh, positions of office, or or uh, you know, and in modern times, maybe getting favourable access to uh, PPE contracts, for example. Um, for example, yeah. might be said to be utterly corrupt on behalf of those officials in charge of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So Kavanaugh starts talking about a clear statement. That's something that um, Sauer brought up, but then he's, this is the only thing that Kavanaugh seems to want to talk about, is that, right. is that you need a clear statement. And clear, by that he means a, any law to apply to the president has to specifically it, mention the president. Say, it's got to apply it to, to the president. Yeah, it has to say no one is allowed to kill anyone, even the president. It, That's what it has. Otherwise, president. he's fine. He's he's golden. If he does a thing that, that it doesn't specifically say in the law he's not allowed to do, yeah, there's yeah. nothing you can do. That's, you know, <laughs> yeah. they just get away yeah. with it. Um, one, one, of the, uh, one of my early jobs, there was a guy I worked with who um, he, his gag was, he said, oh, yeah, I once got. Uh, fired from a, a previous job, and uh, in my defence, there were no signs up about not fighting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no signs no up. Least. So obviously, yeah. I didn't see that. Wasn't an employee handbook. You know, wasn't an employee. <laughs> they didn't apply to me. <laughs> no, nothing about keying the CEO's <laughs> car. No, yeah. not written down. <laughs> written down. Yeah, that's just bollocks, isn't it? What the hell? Did, yeah, but, but surely. The the uh, the overarching notion that no one is above the law would, inc- you know, no one includes absolutely the president. Yeah. So that's a point made by a different justice later on. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you haven't got to go through every single statute on the book, and there are hundreds of thousands of them. There's a lot. And, yeah. And, to, uh, and put with you know with a with a. <laughs> with a big black marker, get Trump to do it. We In fact, there's this only... This also applies to the president. There's only, like, two that do mention the president, so... Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. one of them's bribery. But even that, right. the bribery one is very specific about, like, what it what bribery means in terms of the president. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, yeah, it's it's... Even then, I think Trump probably broke it but yeah oh yeah yeah but, yeah because he doesn't read the rules yeah because he doesn't yeah you know, they don't apply i to mean him. he was on a yeah. uh like special um speed run of trying to break as many laws as possible while president one so exactly yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it was like a supermarket sweep <laughs> but, but you can't, yeah just run yeah. just run through the statute book mm-hmm. and see how many you can smash 
in, in 20 seconds yeah. and, 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 a, and a fake tanned presenter will, yeah. <laughs> will be given a, a seat on the Supreme Court as a result, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Amy Coney Barrett now has a go at teasing out exactly which right. acts are official and private that are alleged. Oh, okay. Um, so the, she mentions yeah. a few, which I'll paraphrase a bit. Turn to a private attorney to uh, telling them to spread false claims. Sauer says, right. "Yeah, that was private." So yeah, the, oh, the, right, the official okay. attorney, the the um, private attorney that was that was willing to spread false claims about the election uh, and Trump getting them to do that private act. That's not part of his official duties. Um, right. Conspiring with an attorney to file false allegations in court again, private attorney. Right. And Sauer said, yeah, mm-hmm. that's private. Um, yeah. And then, uh, so directing others, uh, along with the, the attorneys and uh, another consultant, to submit fraudulent, fraudulent slates of electors. Weirdly, right. at this point, he said, yeah, I think that's also private. Because um, later on, he pretty much says that's official. But at this point, uh-huh. like she's got him to basically accept a big chunk of the things that Trump is a, is accused of. Is yeah, and so are, he's, are, are outside of the immunity. Yeah, um, uh, yeah suggestion well, absolutely. That he's yeah, making. To say, yeah, yeah, not yeah. he's not. He absolutely doesn't accept that Trump did them. He says, you know, as alleged, no. and you know, we yeah, would yeah, dispute yeah, yeah. the allegation. But yeah. yeah, that would be a private act. Um, but yeah, so if, it would be. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be subject to immunity. Yeah, that was their Basically, original argument yeah, was yeah. that he would be immune. But, yeah. but after the Supreme Court narrowed the question, they they have yeah. accepted that private acts are not immune. So, yeah, he's still able and liable to be prosecuted for those things. Um, yep. And uh, But he does say that a bunch of acts that are alleged are clearly official. He doesn't enumerate right. those at this point. Okay, just um, <laughs> beyond a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so th- this is where they get to the seriatim questions. And Alito starts, well, Thomas says something. Thomas hardly says anything ever. Like there, he went yeah. for about 10 years without, uh, literally, uh, not hyper hyperbolic, about 10 years without right. aunt asking a single question during oral arguments. Um, it, wow. And so it was the, the kind of the seriatim questioning where Roberts would say, Justice Thomas, and then he would occasionally ask something. So right. it kind of speared. <laughs> right. sp- uh, spurred him into action, but um, yeah. he didn't say anything of note. I've only written two things down. He said the entire time. So um, Alito <laughs> said, um, "So uh, yeah, we we have to preclude all evidence of official acts at trial if you're talking about expunging it." And and so right. I was like, "Yeah, we absolutely have to do that." And uh, so this is the point where yeah. Sotomayor says, "Yeah, you know, we deal with that through jury instructions. That makes sense." Uh, yep. Eleanor Kagan follows up on Amy Coney Barrett's stuff and asks about more um, allegations. So yep. Trump signing a verification affirming false allegations in court, um, that would be private. Um, right. The um, Calling the RNC chairwoman to gather electors who she was assured would only be used if states officially changed their results... Yeah. Um, and Sarah says that's an official act. Uh, why? Uh, yeah. What? Great question. What? Same why? question Alan Kagan had. <laughs> why? Right. Um, because because he's, yeah. he's he's discussing things with the chair chairwoman of the RNC. So, you know. Um, uh, okay, so that's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, asking mm. the Arizona House Speaker to hold a hearing on election fraud, uh, that's official because, you know, he has to um, converse with, state governments to on a matter of federal interest or something like that so yeah that's right the, these are the this is the point basically where he's thinking <laughs> if i keep saying everything's private we're not gonna have anything left to argue yeah, so i have to have claim case. some yeah, things yeah. are official <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um, and, the, and what about the uh ringing people up to say can you get me eleven thousand and they change didn't they didn't ask votes. about that yeah is that, that wasn't one of the ones yeah. that, that that came up um, but mm. Eleanor Kagan then did did say, "What if if he sells nuclear secrets to a foreign ad- adversary? Is yeah. that immune?" And Sauer's like, "Probably not, but if he does it as an official act, um, then yeah, what? then what? then you'd still need to impeach him and convict him of like at impeachment of, 
before he could be prosecuted. Um, and she's like, "That what? What?" <laughs> then she says, <laughs> yeah. "Okay, how about if he orders the military to stage yeah. a coup?" And and John Sowers like, right. "Might be official. Could be. Depends on how it's how it's done." And Alan Kagan at this point <laughs> says, "All right, what this sounds like is you're saying." Um, according to our rules, that would be official, but it does sound bad, doesn't it? And like you're having trouble arguing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Because that's just well, that's the kind of act activities in uh, what what do you call it? Banana Republic governments that is leveled against governments. For being banana republic governments, so there it's it's a term of abuse based on or a, ter, a term of uh, um, lack of confidence in any kind of government that does that kind of thing. That as a government acts as an official act, yeah, what we've done is gone around, we've arrested all the opposition, yeah, and actually what we've done, we are in opposition. Um, so we or we're we're going to stage a military coup to prevent the next election. From Absolutely, happening. yeah, yeah. Those are the things that are condemned by the international uh, community, and not least the Americans, well, you know, not, the US, not the Republican Party, then. <laughs> Oh no, no, that's true. <laughs> that's true. They go, yeah, you go, you go ahead and do that. If you want to stay in power, of course you can. Yeah, yeah. You know, like like uh, Robert Mugabe. Oh yes, you uh-huh. can stay in power for seventy years by killing the opposition. Of course Absolutely. you can. Great. Yeah, we'll invite you to the White House. Yeah, if we're yes, or we'll just go. Yeah, great, great people, Putin. Yeah. yeah. So Eleanor Kagan makes the point that. Um, the framers did not include immunity in the constitution. No matter what, how much Sauer wants to say, it's you know it's mm. there. It's always been there. It's not there. Yeah. And they knew no. how to do it. She says they, you know, there were various examples in states' constitutions. Uh, they they were aware of how to include immunity if they wanted to, and they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Amy Coney Barrett makes another excellent point, which it, I. D- did not think I would hear myself say about Amy Coney Barrett, mm. but yeah. um, she she points out that the clear statement test is not compatible with his argument about them about presidents being prosecuted in court after they've been impeached and convicted in mm-hmm. the Senate. Yeah, because if his, they're arguing that the president is only you know laws only apply to the president if it specifically mentions the president. Mm-hmm. Then he can't be um, convicted even after impeachment. Theoretically, he could be impeached still. I think, although she didn't make this argument, but but people were saying during at least one of Trump's impeachments that it didn't actually need to be a crime. <laughs> what your high crimes and misdemeanors means right. something specific in in yeah. terms of you know things you're not allowed to do. Yeah. Um, and it didn't technically need to be something that was against the law. I mean, it was you know, it was uh, just incompatible with yeah. the with the with the Clinton, office of president. Clinton's impeachment exactly. uh, um, investigation that wasn't yeah. for breaking the law. No, that um, was because it was incompatible with the yes. high office of the president. Yeah, yeah. So he would. Yeah. So even if the clear statement test was a real thing, yeah. that wouldn't prevent them from being able to impeach him. And convict him yep. in the Senate, in theory. Yeah. But it would prevent them from being able to prosecute afterwards. And he's been saying the whole time that that's the only way you can prosecute them. So. Ah, yes, yeah. yes. And yes, despite the fact that you, the, the, he also invokes double jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> to say you can't prosecute. If they've already been impeached and, 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 and indicted, then you can't prosecute him. But then uh, you can only prosecute him if you impeach and indict them. And convict, yeah, yeah. We can't can beat, yeah, you can't have both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah and convict. Sorry, yes. So, yeah, um, Justice Jackson, uh, she's she's the last one, the the newest justice, and she said, um, "Why would we want a situation where the president can commit crimes? <laughs> like, why are we arguing in right. favour? Why is anyone yeah, yeah, arguing yeah, in favour exactly. of this? You know, you're yeah. you're saying it would make it 
bit difficult for him to be president. It should be difficult mm-hmm. for him to be president. If the yeah. the thing that makes it easier is the ability to constantly commit Go. crimes. So, yes. <laughs> So and that ought to not be something we give to somebody who's had a history of committing a lot of crimes yeah, well, that, and then yeah, manipulating ideally. the law to try and get away with it. Yeah, yeah. So she yeah. Uh, she makes the point that um, Michael Dreben, the, the the people's lawyer, will make later that um, he has access to the best legal advice you could possibly have. He literally yeah. has the attorney general at his beck and call that he can call yeah. and say, look, I'm, I'm going to do this thing. Am I allowed to do that thing? And the attorney general, yeah. who's in charge of deciding whether you're allowed to do stuff, can say, yeah. no, that's, a, not, a law, that's not a thing you're allowed to do. On a legal basis, yeah. yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, so the chilling effect that um, Sarah claims the possibility of prosecution would have on the president's ability to do his job, um, even if you accept that's a bad thing, the opposite of that, of not not having that chilling effect, is way worse. And and she says that the White House at that point could become the seat of crime. So, mm. which is well, yeah, it would become Biff Tannen's yeah. um, uh, house on the hill or Trump's administration. Have you, have the, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. What? Yes, because that's the. Yeah. What? Yes. So, so Sauer is saying. Yeah, w- w- ought we be uh, retrospectively impeaching Biden for encouraging? Well, you know, we don't want we don't want to do that. No, but we but we should be. Don't should make us do that. that for a <laughs> don't make us do it. If you if you if you that's the logical conclusion. That's where it's going to end up. Yeah. But the, so it makes it really difficult. Said, well, yes, you'd want to make it really difficult be- because yes, if the only impediment to being the president is. That you've got to do legal stuff, yeah. Then don't apply to be president. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's you know, just continue to be a mafia boss, or just continue to be a corrupt real estate tycoon. Yeah, debtor. Mm. Yeah, just continue to do that. You don't have to be the president. Just yeah, don't just don't do that. that. Yes, what's why somebody isn't pointing out that. The only reason this is in the court in the first place is because it's Trump. Yeah. And he's a massive fraudster and he wants to continue to be the president. He doesn't want to be hindered by having to obey the law because he's not. This is the only job he's likely to have where he has to obey <laughs> the law. Because all of the all of the times that he's not obeyed the law are now coming out and he's sitting in a courtroom yeah. in Manhattan having to do that day after day, face the, the the facts being read out and written down against him. So so the the upshot of this is if they divide the stuff into official and unofficial or official and private and then say, okay, he is liable for the private stuff, does that allow or are liable for these acts, which we defined are private, and therefore he's not subject to immunity. Does that allow the lower court to then gather evidence of him breaking the law for those acts, um, so that they could ev- eventually spend months yes. writing it all down? Yes, absolutely. Right. If they, uh, right. I mean, they're not going to find. I don't think that everything official. And like a kind of to an extent of Fitz, of Nixon v Fitzgerald is yeah is yeah immune. I don't think they're going to find yeah. that. That would be very surprising. Um, but they are going to craft some kind of immunity for official acts. For some, mm. there's some there's some core acts that even the people uh, Michael Dreben uh, argues are not subject to interference from Congress. Um, Right, because that's essentially partly what this is argument is about. It's about separation of powers, because you know the the co-equal branches of government um, means that there are checks and balances. But mm. um, but and and so the president is breaking laws that have been put in place by Congress um, yeah. when when he breaks the law, and so yeah. he's not above Congress. So yeah. That means that it's not. That's part of why it's not allowed. But there are some things that the president does that are in the constitution that are not 
able to be interfered with by Congress, such as, for example, pardon power. Um, that's beyond right. any review. Um, and and appointing ambassadors is another. Um, yeah. So that isn't isn't oh, one that could be questioned, but yeah. the bribery bit of it still could be. So, yeah, yeah. And also the, and the pardon, selling intent pardons behind be pardons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. And, and that's that an allegation that, that, that has certainly been made, uh, with partly with Giuliani essentially admitting it that, yeah. that he would be he. I I can't remember if he admitted it or if someone else said that Giuliani was kind of going around basically telling people they could have a pardon for a quarter of a million dollars or something like that in in right. the, the waning right. days of Trump's presidency. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And that's why Trump was asking: Is it possible to pardon yourself? Yeah. That's it's just it, it's nobody kind of just stood there. And going, <laughs> what are you asking? Yeah. Why are you asking that? We know why you're asking that. What's your intent? Yes, that's because yeah. you're a master criminal <laughs> and you want to go. Yeah, can I just use my own executive powers to pardon myself? No, <laughs> because what you've been doing is all deeply criminal. Yeah. So of course you can't. And that's yes. Yeah, so whilst you, you you don't remove the power to pardon, you would question. The intent behind it, yes, and you know, yes, the equivalent of the bribe bit, yes, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. So, um, yeah, the answer to the question is essentially if at some point there is an agreement or a ruling on which parts yeah. he is immune for and which parts he isn't, which would require several more steps, then at that right. point, yes, the things he's not immune for could be enumerated and prosecuted. But in um, the but in the meantime, if they if they are only going to be looking at official acts, vis a vis because mm. vis a vis the immunity stuff. In the meantime, yeah. is it not possible for uh, whoever the judge was in the lower court to say, well, I can start gathering evidence? There is then, an argument that Jack Smith, the prosecutor, could yeah, yeah. remove yeah. all official acts or or things that are likely to be seen as official acts from. The, um, the indictment, and yeah. and only try and prosecute the unaf the the private acts, um, yeah. But that essentially just means he's getting away with all of that other stuff that he did. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And and there's a lot of official, uh, or on the edge of official stuff that is included in all of the bad stuff he did. So I don't think they're going <laughs> to do that. And also, yeah. even then, there would be arguments. They would be making claims that the things that whatever he put in there was was an official act. If I mean, look at yeah. Sauer. He's he's claiming yeah. things that were clearly not official acts are official acts. So they'd be yeah. they'd be appealing that. So they'd still yeah. be able to slow it up. I don't think there'd be a way around it. Um, but there is an interesting thing that they can do because when this gets remanded back to the district court, which is Ch Tanya Chapkin's mm. court. Yep. Um, she, in order to make that determination of which acts are official mm. and which acts are private, un yeah, under whatever yeah, yeah. system they set up, is going to probably have to have some hearings on that. Yep. She's going to have to hear yep. arguments from both sides. Yep. And what she can do, although she can't go to trial, she could have mm -hmm. a fact hearing on right. that basis where in she yep. can say look in order to make the ruling in order to decide which of the acts that are alleged um are official acts under the supreme court's purview or yep. uh, private acts i need to hear the facts about what he is alleged what he did yeah yeah so yep. we are going to have a, a hearing and that could last weeks of yep. of you know, lay out in detail for me, prosecution. Let's hear witnesses. Let's have witnesses come and, and talk about the, the you know, what they yeah. know about the things that Trump did so that I can determine what is an, an act that we should be looking at and what acts might be immune. Yeah, um, and yeah. that can be publicly reported on and all of that information can yeah. come out without her ever yeah. starting the trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's actually... That's, that's a possibility. Kind of that's kind of what Trump dislikes most. Well, yeah, he's trying to it? stop this, the, all of this, all of this fact stuff yeah. coming out before the election. Yeah, yeah. Well, which is which is what's turning out to be the real story about the story Stormy Daniels case mm -hmm. is that you know, he was 
uh, in a conspiracy to prevent facts coming out before the last the 2016 election. Absolutely. So yeah, so if the, if we can if if we if those <laughs> facts can can come out doesn't need to go to trial it would just say here are the things that went on of course obviously the uh, the mega crowd would just spin it somehow because that's what they do turn themselves inside out to mm-hmm. to confirm their own biases but it would uh, i was going to say severely dent his reputation but his reputation is severely dented anyway yeah you i mean there's a there's a the... few people it could affect yeah but yeah but yeah, I mean, it, the the reality is that um, it would be because um, it's not a state issue. This is a federal issue. Um, yeah. If he were to get in again, he can just make this go away. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so actually, let's hope he so doesn't. actually the <laughs> yeah. So, so actually the. And and what he's doing, of course, is trying to suppress all of this stuff so he can get in, so he can yes. make it go away. Absolutely. So if if um, uh, you know if the lower courts are listening, yeah, just do a facts hearing. Just do that. Get all that stuff. You haven't got to go to to uh, prosecute or anything. You haven't got to go to trial. You can just get all the facts out, yeah. and that would be sufficient to annoy him. Possibly that he might eat too much and die. You know, not wishing death on anyone. It's worth a go. It's worth a go. It's <laughs> worth a, but, you know, worth a uh-huh. go. Let's, yeah. let's give it a go. Yeah. So anyway, the we also then heard from the, the people's lawyer, Michael Dreben, right. who's arguing on yep. behalf of the Department of Justice, who yep. incidentally... Much nicer voice, by uh, the way. Was, yeah. uh, ...was wearing a, a normal suit, which is, a despite the suit. fact that there are no um, cameras in the courtroom and, and mm. uh, that it's audio only... Um, yeah. it, when you are arguing on behalf of the Department of Justice in front of the Supreme Court, you're supposed to wear a morning suit. Oh. Um, and and so it's a bit of a kind of court scandal that he turned up just right. wearing a normal everyday suit to the to the point at which I think Judge Alito said something like, "Are you are you arguing for the government?" <laughs> um, and the interesting thing is that in in British courts, um, yeah. lawyers wear like wigs and robes and things. Yeah. And yep. there is a there is a rule in British court that if you go into court, if if you're one of the lawyers that goes into court not wearing your wig, the judge can't see you. It's not like right. the doctor won't yeah, see yeah, you now. Yeah. They, it's not that yeah. they, they they are not allowed to acknowledge you. They have to pretend they can't see you or hear you if you're not wearing yeah. a wig, which is amazing. Yeah. And I, to the point, I yeah. I wanted to write a a legal drama. Um, just so that I could include a scene where a lawyer went into and and the judge was like, hmm, "Where's the prosecution?" Well, and yes. like pretending they're not there, like a five year old. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But and also have and also have some vital bit of evidence <laughs> that's being given, uh-huh. uh, you know, in in a kind of uh, a, a, a jumped up case yeah so that it can't be submitted because the judge can't see him i mean theoretically yeah. i wonder what the rules are on if you are if you do something that would be in contempt of court mm. oh, but yeah. you're not wearing yeah, your yes. wig if you like swear yeah. at the judge or something because mm. theoretically the, you yeah. essentially don't exist in the court in the, if you're not wearing your wig yeah so yeah so if you if you went into court with a baseball bat with a nail through the end <laughs> And and the judge would, they have to uh, just legally you. speaking, not see it coming. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, that would be. That's, it's not quite <laughs> right. that that strong in uh, in the yeah. Supreme Court apparently. So it was just a kind of a reproachful look from Alito. I think he got right. But, um, but his argument, his opening argument, was we've never had uh, presidential immunity. There's not been a there's, oh, that's not a thing. Completely it's not the opposite real. of sour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and that there are um, layers of protection to avoid uh, abuse, essentially. Right. Of if the the you know that that supposed chilling effect that it's not that anyone can just prosecute the president, whatever they do. That 
you know yeah. there, there are there are things there are the fact that you have to make an allegation and then prove it you have to get a yeah. grand jury indictment you have to get a pettit jury to actually then find them guilty you have to you know survive yeah. all of all the of that stuff the, yeah. the <laughs> motions in limine and all of uh, the the whole trial yeah. thing has to go through without being dismissed by the court and you know there's there's a lot of stuff that has to happen that protects a a president from just prosecutorial abuse yeah, um, or or anyone, anyone. Well, anyone, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, yes. So, so whilst nobody is above the law, everyone is protected by the law. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't yeah. mean that there aren't mistakes, as as I think Sonia Sotomayor argues later on that the, it's not a perfect system, but it's not yeah constantly being abused. So um, Thomas opens with, "If there's never been presidential immunity, how come we haven't?" had lots of prosecutions of presidents to which Michael Dreben has uh, the perfect answer because yeah. there weren't any crimes before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Essentially. Exactly. Now yeah. we've got one who did some crimes. This is the mm. first one we've tried to prosecute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's the, that's, that's the deal. Yes. Yeah. And this is, and also <laughs> no, coincidentally, this is the first time a president slash defendant you know co-defendant number one yeah it has said oh well I, but i'm immune yeah. yeah could you not see some sort of link <laughs> there yeah. yeah that's yes <sighs> yep. Yep. so yep. robert <laughs> claims that um he actually kind of misstates the lower court's uh ruling where mm, they're saying yeah. that um it's the this is the appeals court not the district court uh, they're mm-hmm. saying that essentially you're allowed to prosecute him because um, the the crimes that he is alleged of committing being the crimes that he is being alleged of committing mm-hmm. are are serious crimes which are not immune. So that means you're allowed to prosecute them, which which what, what? That's the, a bit odd. yeah yeah so. It's circular. So, well, yeah. that's that's what Robert reads it as, um, mm. but uh, he says essentially it's a tautology. The appeals court are saying you you know you can prosecute him because we're prosecuting him. Um, yeah. I, I think what they were saying was the these crimes that he is accused of are not crimes for which the president has immunity. Right. Therefore, yes. we are allowed. Yeah. You know, you the so prosecution can yes. continue. It's not yes. that he is. We know he's not immune because we're prosecuting him. That's not what they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're, so, yes, we're, pro- we're prosecuting him because these are crimes which he can be prosecuted we, for, and for, which he's, he's alleged to have committed. Of yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. So I think so that, uh, I think Roberts yep, l- yep. missed a step um, in mm. that, uh, and so yeah, he's he's saying, well, we can't just use that as a test. Because then whatever yeah. anyone wants to prosecute yeah. him for, they can say, yeah, this is one that we're prosecuting him for. So Is that not a straw man <laughs> fallacy? He's yeah, just committed yeah. there? Yeah. Um, and yeah. he then um, kind of shits on the legal system quite a lot <laughs> in in saying that the the layers of protection that, that uh, Dreven said protect Dreven the president. Dreven talks about, yeah. Um, yeah. They're, they're not very good, are they? You can't rely on the good faith of prosecutors, essentially, he says. Um, and and okay. you know grand what, juries like these people yeah, yeah. absolutely and grand <laughs> yeah. juries they'll they'll do anything you like you know you can always get a prosecutor can always get a grand jury to to indict and then so wow. so that's not yeah. good enough and they're like that that's the system that protects every american from malicious yeah. prosecution yeah so and also there is the system of protection that they are part of the, very much the, so the supreme not only the, the highest level yeah, of not only yeah. are they are they part of that they're the ones that could change it if it needed to be changed yeah if they felt it it's not being protective. done well enough they're the ones yeah. who get to make that be ruling. better yes ah <laughs> uh, well and this is one of the judges saying it's like Liz Truss saying yeah trouble with people in power they're all unelected yeah unelected leaders. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. 
so what she was. So he mm. says the fact of prosecution, the the fact that he is being prosecuted, is not enough to take away official immunity. And Dreven says, well, there isn't any immunity, and there there yeah. is no immunity in the law, and um, to take away yeah. unless the yeah. court creates it today. Right. So yeah, yeah, which is quite a good argument, I think. Yeah. Dreven's quite experienced. He's he's argued in front of the Supreme Court. A set, like a few dozen times. Um, and you kind of think that the Supreme Court themselves would know this kind of stuff. Yeah, but... You know, and would, wouldn't would interpret it along party lines. Uh, I, I yeah. rather um, generously think <laughs> that in some cases they are doing a kind of devil's advocate thing. I think part of their role right. is to question... Yeah the whatever they're being asked like a kind of jeremy kyle kind of thing you right. know uh, what right. no yeah. matter what this is a, a british radio presenter who no yeah. matter what anyone is saying to him he will always take the opposite opinion to, yeah. and and just try yeah. and cause an issue with them um yeah. and so i think yeah i think they're they are their job in, in at some extent is to test the arguments that they're being presented with by saying well what right. about this and, yeah, yeah, and that yeah, doesn't yeah. necessarily mean they believe that, but yeah, uh, oh, I mean, I don't think they believe a lot of the stuff they've said in this, in these oral arguments. But they are the expedient arguments to get to the yeah. position they want to hold by the end of it. Right. So, yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that yes, I, I see. Yeah. So they're making the arguers argue harder. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it could be could be that you're just still botting ignorant <laughs> people. Yeah. Ignorant, inexperienced, yeah. right yeah. wing appoint- people like Trump Alito. Appointees. Alito and at this Kevin point, uh, after uh, Roberts has pointed out how shit the um, yeah. legal protections that everyone has are. Yeah. Alito yeah. now that complains of, yeah. that that the president, if prosecuted, might have to go through the same process as pe- as normal people. A normal people. He's he gets and all we know how whiny shit about that is. It. He yeah. says <laughs> he says the special protection that presidents get from uh, from statutes being interpreted to avoid constitutional issues because that's what um, Dreben essentially says when anyone asks him, you know, why why things aren't constantly being prosecuted, why presidents aren't constantly being prosecuted, right. um, and why certain things that may technically apply to the president aren't routinely prosecuted. And, and his argument is that because there would be constitutional issues sometimes with things being prosecuted, the, the way around that is often to... Um, to interpret them in a way that means that you avoid that question. You don't you don't make a ruling right. that would cause an issue. The thing one right. of the the cases that this is relevant to is Marbury versus Madison, which is one that um, Sauer kept pointing at. Um, mm-hmm. Marbury versus Madison is essentially the the one that says that the um, there's certain things that the Supreme Court gets to say about what the president is able to do and there's certain things right. that they're not yep. allowed to say you know the the essentially it was a um what who was the outgoing president it was john adams mm-hmm. uh who made some appointments um in the last uh months of his presidency right. and and so when thomas jefferson took over um not all of those appointments had been kind of officially put in place but the, right. the kind of the the letters had gone out, but they hadn't. Those people, some of those people, hadn't been appointed, and um, and so he was like, "Well, stop it. We're not doing it. We're not. We don't want those people that John Adams put yeah. in place to to be." And and Marbury, what what was he? Was he uh, something? I want to. I forget which state it, he was in. It was a um, a commission for. I think he was a judge. Um, right, looking him up. Yeah, it was William Marbury. Marbury. William Marbury. Anyway, I think he was. Oh, right. So it was a. Um, yeah, it, he got the, one of his commission. He was refused the commission. Yeah, essentially, it hadn't been right. delivered by the end of Adams's presidency, and then when Jefferson came yeah. in, he was like, "Well, don't deliver it to him." Um, and right. so Marbury filed a lawsuit to get his commission. 
Yeah. Um, and so at that point, the the Supreme Court, dis- they they looked at all the law, and and the um, looked at a specific section of the law that said that they got to make they they could do a writ of mandamus essentially, which we've discussed before, um, to mm-hmm. to make the um, president and his secretary of state kind of give this guy his commission, but but right. they went actually we think we as the supreme court have been given too much power under this section of the law. Wow! But we have been given more power than the uh, constitution gave us, so we are repealing that section of the law. <laughs> Wow, which was we... a weird way to deal with it, and yeah. and kind of at the time, because the the system had previously been okay. Don't let's not cause the constitutional issues. The the other yeah. the system would have been basically that they would have decided Marbury didn't get his commission, and that's how it yeah. is. He didn't get it before yeah. um, Jefferson B- took before over. Before the the administration changed. Yep, and yep. and so typically that's the kind of argument that has been made, and the kind of decisions that have been taken is where there is an, an a case where in one direction you're causing a constitutional issue you're causing something that is a, a question which might cause problems with constitutional law or with the you know something that is is uh, not been decided you just take the other yep. decision and you avoid the question yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's yeah. an accepted thing it's not like seen as running away from difficult decisions that's like what yeah. you're supposed to do and so that's what uh Dreben is saying is is often done when there is a um a question that would raise a constitutional issue with regard to making mm-hmm. the president do something yeah and that's why the president isn't constantly being prosecuted for stuff um and so alito says that the um that that interpretation of the law that is often done to avoid trying to prosecute presidents for things mm-hmm. um isn't as good as immunity because um, there's still, if he does, if he he's still open to court cases, essentially, as we've yep. found, as yep. he's in court at the moment. Um, yep. And that means that he has to go to trial sometimes and trials are expensive and they take a long time and he might have to actually be there. And, yeah. and the outcome is dependent on a jury. And I'm like, who, yeah, like yeah, everyone else, everybody else, every single other person who is subject yeah. to the law, yes, at some point has to has, be might have to go to, to the legal processes, yeah, go to trial, yeah, which are inconvenient you and expensive and time-consuming. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, how how is that compatible with their first avowed intent that no one's above the law? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> but that doesn't matter because they're conservative justices. Yeah, and, they go, and he's their guy. Yeah. 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 So, um, Kavanaugh raises <sighs> the clear statement thing again. Um, Dreven says no, that's yeah. not really a thing. Um, Gorsuch <laughs> yeah. then says, um, he he asked this question before in another case uh, about a, right. about January sixth stuff. I think when they were looking yeah. at the, it might have been Blazing Game. Um, and, uh, he's, so he says, okay, look, let's say the president leads a sit-in, uh, like a mm-hmm. civil rights protest, uh, oh, yeah. which, which delays, yeah, yeah. uh, Congress from having a proceeding. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that part of his core powers, the things he's allowed to do, like that the con- that Congress can't, um, do anything about? And Dreben says, no, it's yeah. not one of those. It's not like pardon power. It's not something like that. And so yeah. Gorsuch says, okay, well, can he be prosecuted for that? And I think a little bit unwisely, Dreben at this point says, probably not. Oh. I think what oh. he meant was he probably yeah. wouldn't be prosecuted for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, Rather cause, than cause, he, couldn't, he couldn't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't... Yeah think there's anything that stops him from being prosecuted and when he when the questioning yeah. goes further he is that essentially comes out as his opinion is is yes he could it's it's just not yeah. a thing that is likely to be an issue because yeah protests are a thing you're allowed to do generally speaking and if yeah. if a, if and partly it would be the intent thing because yeah again gorsuch here is talking about how you know if if he does it with corrupt intent and and gorsuch is like Nobody really knows what corrupt intent is. 
Like you're well, the guys. You're the ones who you, are supposed who to know that. Decide what that yeah. is. Yes. Yeah. Nobody. But yeah, that's yeah. useful for you to say because he did lead <laughs> a kind of a protest yeah. to with corrupt intent to prevent the peaceful transfer of power to the guy that won because he didn't. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. This is all a very nice little metaphor, but. And and if also you're saying you know if if they delay slightly the proceeding, then yep. um you know that's against the law. If he does if he does it with corrupt intent, he's breaking the mm. law. Um yep. and and the answer to that is essentially yes, he is breaking the law. Yes, it is a yep. thing he could be prosecuted for. But yep. how about if we make it a better metaphor? And at that sit-in, there's people with with guns and pipe bombs and bear yep. spray. And they are beating up policemen, and uh, the the Congress hearing that is delayed, the the Congress people inside have to run for their lives to for a the, the, to the, a yes. secure area, to a, yeah. um, because their lives are in danger. Um, yeah, let's make it a real uh, analogy for oh. what happened, but they don't do that. Drebin doesn't. Doesn't say that he um, <sighs> he says yep. yes. I probably he wouldn't be prosecuted for it. Essentially. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Because he's right in the middle of the the, the that it was a, what he was was a um, yeah. there was this phrase when I used to work in uh, computing. There was this great phrase which was kind of the opposite of a, a, a electronic spike. It was called a deep momentary sag. <laughs> so, uh, which is just a lovely phrase. I suspect in saying. No, he probably wouldn't be prosecuted. <laughs> Is that his deep momentary mm. sag? Because he's right in the middle of the proceedings that illustrate to him that despite leading a protest, he isn't going to be prosecuted. So yeah. he just has that little momentary, <laughs> deep momentary sag. And he's just gone, no, no, he probably <laughs> wouldn't. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there would, and in the film version of it, there would be yeah. like a big zoom close up, and then he'd kind of drift off, and he'd be walking <laughs> alongside a pond uh -huh. with some lovely flowers, and there would be a sunny day, <laughs> and his long lost mother would come out and get, bring him a sandwich, and then he'd be back in the room, and he'd go, "Ah, oh, oh. fuck, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> so, um, yeah, Sonia Sotomayor says uh, that it seems um, weird that. The person who's in charge, who, the person who takes an oath to take care that the law be faithfully executed, is the mm -hmm. one person who doesn't then have to follow that law. Faithfully execute it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alito says, um, so if he makes a mistake, the president is subject to criminal law just like anyone else. Uh, and Dreben, uh, Dreben says, well, we don't, yeah. we don't, you know, making a mistake isn't the kind of thing that lands you in court. In jail. No, um, it's it's the crime committing thing that is the yeah, issue. It's all, it's not yeah, mistakes. yeah, it's called call me yeah. a niggly, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, I've gone yeah. and started an insurrection. <gasps> oh, I tripped. Oh, no, I didn't and, mean to do that. Someone. Yeah. It's happened again. Yeah, oh, happened again. <laughs> I meant to pick up a yeah. tissue, but I accidentally picked up fifteen oh, boxes yeah. of classified documents. Yeah. Oh, oh why, no. why does this always oh. happen to me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in such a hurry. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I meant to pick up the keys to my car, and I actually, what I, what I did was close down the election process. Yeah, I was ordering, yeah. A, I was trying to order a pizza, and I accidentally and called I, the Secretary of State for jobs and demanded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh uh -huh. no yeah 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 <laughs> yes so Quite. yeah we get to seriatim questioning for michael dreben now and um alito asks what about bad attorneys general you know what if if he's he gets his um uh his his legal advice from the attorney general yeah but what if he just hires an attorney general who tells him what he wants to hear. Well, you yeah. Know, what's to stop that happening? Mm. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly. Which is kind of odd because that's kind of what's going it's, to It's happen. a little bit, a little bit. But yeah, yeah I think yeah. one of the arguments against that 
first of all, there's the advice and consent argument that he doesn't get to yeah. pick whoever he wants. He gets to to yeah. suggest someone, and then um, the you know Congress gets to advise on it and consent to that appointment. Um, but yeah. also, um, there's the fact that if uh, lower officials like the attorney general are also subject to prosecution which they are if an if an attorney general who didn't who told him that a thing that was illegal was fine then yeah that attorney general could arguably be prosecuted so probably exactly. he won't yes yes <laughs> he might yes. but you know it's yeah. more likely that the Attorney General will go, no, you absolutely can't do this. And then Trump will go, I'm doing it anyway. What's, what are they going to do? Because essentially, yeah. that's exactly what happened when he hired Kushner. Yes. He, yeah. he, he got the advice. I'm absolutely sure he got the advice from his Attorney General who said, no, since Don't Kennedy, since Kennedy put Robert Kennedy in as his Attorney General, there's been a law that says you're not allowed to do that. Um, and Trump yeah. said, well... But what are they going to do? Are they going to impeach me for it? And and whoever was attorney general at the time, probably Jeff Sessions, said, probably not. They went, right, I'm doing it then. I'm appointing I'm that Kushner. Then. So, yep. yeah. 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 He, he, so, that yeah. was one of the first laws he broke, like pretty much day one. It's so fucking depressing. <laughs> the I'm having, it's not a momentary sag. I'm having a <laughs> deep, decade long sag I just think yes that's the whole of Trump's raison d'etre for this appeal to this oh let's get it up to the Supreme Court is to be able to break the law with impunity he wants to do whatever the fuck he wants to do yeah and he literally wants to go into the streets of New York and shoot people and get away with it he would that's, love that yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely love it, and then and he'd stand there and say, "Yeah, you see, I told you I could." Yeah, he'd just stand there wielding the gun around like Michael Douglas, <laughs> in, falling down. You know, yeah, yeah, falling down. Yeah, um, I yeah. Mean, I mean, he would go. He would literally go postal. Alyssa Farrah Griffin to show that you could. Said, I think she's probably got a book coming out. She said that um, that Trump uh, said he would. He thought the person who leaked the fact that he had to go into a bunker. Uh, when there was protests outside the White House, um, he th he thought that person should be executed. And wow. and yep. so Bill Barr was on one of the Sunday shows and being asked about that and was like, you know, did is this? Do you remember that happening? And Bill Barr was like, I don't remember that time, but it sounds like the kind of thing he'd done. He was always yeah. saying stuff like that. I'm like what the fuck? This is not. That's not yeah. a plus. That's no. not a good thing. Um, no. And that's, and so it, the. It is yeah, I think it's, it was Caitlin Collins was, was saying, well, yeah. you know, that's what that doesn't that seem like a bad thing? You know, what mm. did, did you think that was negative? And he was like, ah, oh, we didn't really take him seriously most of the time. He could he could usually be talked around. Nobody actually got executed. And they were like, this isn't the test. That, that shouldn't no. be how no. it is decided. <laughs> Is is if if so the president okay. says mad yeah. illegal things, it's yeah, all right because he probably didn't mean it most of the time, and and we didn't get yeah. to do many of those yeah. things. That's well, it's a bit like the defence in the other case where um, the guy who's accused of um, helping uh, manipulate the election campaign of Trump. Which uh, one? Uh, where, <laughs> Yeah, we, yeah that one. Um, yes, who says, "Oh, it's okay because we did it for for uh, Schwarzenegger." Oh, yeah, yeah. Did it for Schwarzenegger and, and Tiger go, Woods. Oh, oh, Sorry, that's yeah. all right then. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we do it all the time. It's fine. Doesn't make it less crimey. <laughs> the fact that the fact that yeah. you've done it before. Oh yeah, he used to say that loads of times. <laughs> we, do, I don't think we carried all of them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, oh, that's good then. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, or we could just be in North Korea. <sighs> or the, what? Or, or where? Oh, it's mad dictator stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, yes, yeah, so I've, I've changed my mind. I don't want him to die from overeating. I want someone <laughs> to string him up from a lamppost. That's, yeah, upside down. You know, yeah, 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 upside, yeah, upside down. <laughs> no, yeah. So all of so you can't actually see his face because <laughs> all of his body will flop over it. 
Yeah, no, let's hang about the right way. But yeah, yeah that, that's you know, but it, but it's fine because I don't probably don't mean it, and I haven't actually probably. successfully no, done no, that with, stuff, with uh, former hasn't presidents. Hasn't happened yet, so so that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so why not give me the the executive role? <sighs> <sighs> so uh, yeah, Alito asks. Um, like why we should rely on grand juries because um, he he brings out the old thing of uh, grand you can indict a ham sandwich with a grand jury. Yeah. Um, Dreben yeah. Dreben points out that um, essentially when Alito is saying you know why do you in your experience do, are there a lot of instances where um, a prosecutor can't get an indictment from a grand jury someone they're trying to prosecute and Dreben right. says the reason that doesn't happen much is because there's no incentive for a prosecutor to try and bring a case that they can't prove. Right. Yeah. So, no, that, there's like a survivorship bias thing going on there. You know, they'll yeah. they'll bring yeah. good cases to, to a yeah. grand jury and the grand jury will go, oh, that's a good case. Yeah. Rather than, this is a ham sandwich. Yeah. yeah. So, which I thought was a really good point. Um, yeah. And yeah. then uh, Alito continues... Well, this is the FDR thing. Could could mm. Franklin Delano Roosevelt be charged for interning Japanese Americans? And um, and again, at this point, you think he's saying, you know, would that would that be over the line? But what he's actually saying is, you know, let's not be crazy. We wouldn't want to prevent Japanese so, Americans yeah. from being interned at any point. Yeah. That would be a bad thing. Um, that would be, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And God, what, yes. So Dreben essentially says, "Well, not not at the time, but now, yes, he could be," mm. um, mm-hmm. and which is again ideal. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so he then asks if the attorney general did say um, that it was okay, what he whatever he wanted to do, would he yeah. then be immune from prosecution? And um, Dreben is very careful all the time to not use immunity for everything, which isn't really mm-hmm. immunity. When yeah. when there's other rules about things that you can prosecute or not pr- prosecute that aren't immunity, he uses those terms. Yeah. And the, the justices are constantly going, well, let's just call it immunity. It's fine. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. no. Um, and in we're this case, we're all legal professionals yeah, here. Absolutely, this stuff is we can important. all understand the things, the the actual terms. Yeah. And this yeah. is another one where it's not it's not immunity, but he wouldn't be prosecuted because of a thing called entrapment by estoppel, uh, which uh-huh. essentially means if an official tells you you're allowed to do something and you do it. Right. They can't then turn around and go, ha ha, it wasn't allowed actually, I'm arresting you. Right, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it's a, yes, well, it, that reminds me of Boris Johnson's um, argument about having a party during lockdown or attending a party during lockdown because I asked some people and they said, oh, yeah, no, that's not in breach of the rules. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out the people that he asked worked for him <laughs> and weren't the people that made up the rules. Yeah. He was. Yeah, so that's, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is I will just cherry pick. But if he'd asked the and, um, head of the Crown Prosecution Service. Yeah. Um, and, and then the... The, that person, said, that yeah, person said, yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. fine. Waited for them to and, have a party and then went in and arrested and everyone. Them, yeah, that wouldn't yeah. be allowed under American <laughs> no. law. I don't know about British law, right? But that, that, well, I think everybody be... would have liked. I think <laughs> the if we would have done the uh, the what the Supreme Court has done in previous time, and then just changed the law in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just go, it's a bit like the. Um, there was there was gate gate so Downing Street gate gate, um, <laughs> when Chris not Chris Patton oh he was was it Chris Patton anyway somebody who was the head of DFID I think the Department for International Development had been allegedly quite abusive to the policeman on oh, the yeah, gate oh yeah called them and, plebs was that the guy who called yeah, them plebs yeah 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 and uh, eventually got fired and stuff and then it turned out that they had made sure that he had to go through that gate <laughs> rather than some other way in order to kind of do that. And it was also a bit like when uh, Matt Hancock 
got seen to be groping his secretary during lockdown in the office, they had moved the camera so that it because they knew it was going on, so they just moved the camera. I mean, that's uh, not to, entrapment to be able to film it. That's not entrapment at all. That's not. No. That, they didn't make him grope her. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But it's but it's kind of it's and and then sort of uh, everybody just looked the other way. And went, oh yeah, no, uh, oh oh look at that, it's on the camera. And yeah, like, yeah, because that's where you put the camera there. Put the camera there. That's yeah, where if they'd her. kind of yeah. if they'd all pretended they were going home and then put on some Barry White. <laughs> That'd be another issue. Yeah. <laughs> but just Turn making sure down, that though. the camera was that... put in the right direction. <laughs> that might have been yeah. a little bit of entrapment. Yeah. And if she was in on the on the uh-huh. thing, yeah. Yeah. How are we going to get rid of Matt Hancock <laughs> this time? Yeah, let's get him to go to the jungle and eat a can- kangaroo's anus. No, no. What we uh-huh. need to do is, yeah, because it worked with, with Chris, whatever his name was, and the gates. Yeah, let's try, let's try this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, baby. We really got it together. Let's, let's get it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except actually, Barry White never did. Let's get it on. No, that no, was somebody Marvin else. Gaye. No. Yeah, so, yeah. But there was uh, a great. Uh, that was you can do that. Enough, but there's a great uh, Italian young Italian guy on. Uh, Brit- Italy's got talent. Britain's got talent. Anyway, he was on a talent thing. The Simon Cowell increasingly weird uh, face <laughs> reconstruction um, show. And he came That's on and did name. a version of Barry White singing, Let's Get It On. And he's like 20-year-old young guy with this ama- amazing voice. Mm. And, he, and you think, oh, yeah, well, there, yeah, go. Yeah. And you think, why didn't Barry White do a version of that? Should have done. <laughs> it was perfect. So, yeah, Alito says at this point, yeah. um, if an ex-president can be prosecuted by a Better political rival. <laughs> Not showing his politics here at all, obviously. No. no. Um, <laughs> right. Wouldn't the most obvious thing for him to then do be to do whatever he could to avoid leaving office? Because if once oh. he leaves office, he'll be prosecuted. In much the same okay, way so as, there's as a justification. Happens. Yeah, so so what yeah. we should do in order to make sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power every time, yeah, we should make sure that presidents can't be prosecuted for any crimes they commit because that way they'll be fine leaving, you know, just like Trump was. He didn't what? cause any issues on the way out, did he? So no. that's the that's the no. that's the logic, and understandably. The fuck? Michael Dreven says, God disagrees. Uh, yeah. exactly the opposite of what you just said. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's a hundred percent wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. He, he pointed out that there are lawful ways to challenge um, elections. And, yep. and he also yep. mentioned just in passing that um, Trump did that a lot and didn't win any of them. Yep. Well, one, one yeah. that didn't have any effect on anything. Yeah. Um, but lost sixty or so, so yeah. Of all yeah. the legal challenges, yes, yeah. And the, and you know, the, and the ultimate wasn't a bitter political rival. It was the the successful winner of the election. Well, not only that, it wasn't even him. It was the Department yeah. of Justice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Who not- didn't, <laughs> they, they, Yeah. No. Nobody's kind of prosecuted. Biden didn't say, right, we're going to have to get no. this guy. No. So when he get, when we get in, we'll go go after him. So that's why you so it's quite reasonable that he wouldn't want to leave because he would be a little bit it frightened. Was, it was the Department be... of Justice. It was yeah. special prosecutors. It was individual states uh, attorney generals, and it was grand juries. Yeah, not Biden. Not Biden. No. Yeah. So, all kinds of bad information wrong. in Alito's all kinds question. Of wrong there. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you get to when you're the supreme? When you're a Supreme Court justice, aren't you supposed to be a little bit kind of impartial? Yeah, not anymore. No, there's not. Right. There's no. No. I mean, I say not anymore. Uh, Like since since Scalia, (laughs) not really. No. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Probably quite a long way before. (laughs) You know, and there's a lot. There's a lot of. 
okay, him being devil's advocate, but I think he's probably crossed the line into being yeah. utterly partisan. Yeah, yeah. And you're just using terms like bitter political rival. Yeah. Where, you know, be, read something other than truth social, for Christ's sake, Alito. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah. Eleanor Kagan yeah. uh, says, um, he, she asks again about, uh, private and official acts and she says Trump trying to get the Department of Justice to make false claims about election fraud is that a private act um, and uh, Dreben says no nope, that's official and not only is it official but that makes it worse the fact that he nice. was using his office to do this yep. thing yep. and not yep. doing it as a, a as an private individual is yep. way worse yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and yeah. also, and, and and it's not like Trump did that by accident at no. all. I accidentally and in doing that, that. Um, yeah. threatening to remove Department of Justice officials who weren't prepared to yeah to, um, to, to go along about with his... false claims about yeah. election fraud. Uh-huh. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Gorsuch yeah. asks if the people agree with Blazing Game, um, and uh, Dreben says yes, they do, but. They don't think that it really or uh, Nixon versus Fitzgerald apply to criminal cases because they're both right. civil cases. Yep. So yep. they yep. agree uh, with Blazing Games finding about there being acts which you do as the ho- office holder versus acts you do as the office yep. seeker. But yep. yeah, the the official versus private aspect of it doesn't really isn't a test for criminal cases. It's, right. Uh, it's yes. civil only. Yep. Yep. Um, Gorsuch uh, picks up on the office holder versus office seeker question um, mm-hmm. and says, but, you know, a first term president is essentially always wanting to be um, a second term president. They're always hoping to be re elected. So, doesn't that basically mean that everything they do is, you know, how can you separate it out into. <laughs> yeah what is a, uh, a a thing that an office holder is doing versus a thing that an office seeker is doing. Which is incredibly Which should, disingenuous because yeah. there's already laws that require you, you to it. do that. Yeah. There's like the <laughs> yes. Hatch Act, for example. There's specific right. things. Like yeah. the Hatch Act is, is you can't use official uh, resources to campaign. So... That's a yeah. separate yeah. thing. You can you, you can't yeah. do a campaign can't speech from the, the Oval Office, for example. Yes, yes, you can't use the office of president to yeah. uh, as an election um, platform. Yeah, and the, yeah, the as a candidate yes. and the um, campaign staff are not allowed to coordinate with the the West Wing on various issues. You know, they yeah. have to be separate. There has to be some kind of Chinese Wall type thing uh, between those those groups because of yeah. that understanding that there are things you do as an official and there are things yeah. you do as a person hoping to win an election that can be separated. So, yeah. Yeah. That's that, just yes. disingenuous. Yeah. yeah. At, at, the, at the least. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and then Kavanaugh does a, a very slippery slope uh, fallacy of essentially right. saying, you know, where does it stop if we, if yeah, we start yeah. prosecuting... <laughs> people for crimes when are we ever not going to prosecute a president <laughs> people for crimes, <laughs> and, yeah. and Dreepen well, doesn't if, say maybe when they stop they committing don't commit crimes, crimes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and this is the point at which he starts to kind of be on Nixon's side when when he's, he brings up Ford pardoning Nixon again and it, which right. has already been raised as an excellent example of why there isn't any immunity yeah yeah, he brings it up, uh, kind of saying the opposite in a way. He says that Ford pardoning Nixon was a controversial decision at the time, and is now looked on as one of the better decisions in political history. By fucking By who? who? Yes, <laughs> by the Trump administration. Yeah, what? By Kavanaugh, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How is that? Where? Where's your proof of that, Mister Kavanaugh? And what? and so his argument for why this is proof that immunity existed, essentially, the fact that Ford yeah. pardoned Nixon for crimes is proof that there 
a president can't commit no. crimes is because Ford yeah. was only able to do this because he was not worried about being prosecuted for for, doing, uh, for, for obstruction of justice by pardoning Nixon. Oh, the fuck. <laughs> yeah. What? That's yeah. tortuous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, mm, so that's you know even even in legal circles that's probably going to be looked at and the thrown away i mean the, uh, one of the ironies of that is essentially that if nixon had been prosecuted at the time and ford hadn't yep. pardoned him we wouldn't be having any of these discussions now because they'd all it yeah. would all be settled yeah. law yeah because because any yep potential issues had that had come up would have been dealt with back then. Yeah, yeah. Like they were dealt with by putting into place the Presidential Records Act, for example. Yeah, for example. Which is one of the yes. reasons that Trump wasn't uh, allowed to Trump take all in, those things. Yes, that he, that he just <sighs> took because he wanted to show yeah. off to his di- dictator mates. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Gerald Ford got a lot to answer for. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So um, Amy Coney Barrett uh, points out that another option for the special counsel to proceed with the case mm. would be to do it yeah. only on private grounds, take out all of the official stuff. Um, yeah. And and Dreben says essentially that, yes, that would be an option, but we still think that the official acts can be described in the case as, in as the, part of as those private. acts. Yeah. And, yeah. and the the defense don't agree with that so that would have to be dealt with essentially yeah. yeah so yeah um justice jackson repeated essentially the whole thing about yeah is it what we want is not the um president who feels they're allowed to do whatever they like we want a president who is constrained that's yeah. that's a better thing yeah uh and that yes was, that was the end of it essentially and um and we will wait now for the i mean we you know we we can make assumptions based on the kinds of questions they asked and the tone with which they asked them but we mm. won't actually get a ruling until end of june beginning of july before they break up for the summer um and yeah. um then i i mean i would be very shocked if it isn't essentially some official immunity for some official acts and sending it back to the district court to decide on which of the alleged acts are official and which are private, which will then be repeatedly appealed. Appealed, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did ask, actually, Sauer, if... uh, I think it was Kavanaugh asked Sauer which one... uh, which court should make the determination on which acts were private and official. Mm -hmm. He said that it should be the district court... Um, and right. I think that the reason that they said that is probably because that delays it for longer. Because if you if it went to the appeals right. court, yeah, um, then you can only then appeal that to the supreme court. But if you take it all the way down to the district court, then it can be appealed then to the appeals court to and the then appeals to the court. Yeah, supreme yeah, court. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, wow. Uh, now, somebody I was reading a, a kind of uh, oh, it was Jen uh, Jen Saki mm. on the um, MSNBC who yep. was saying they don't need to give him too much because if you give Trump an inch, he will take a mile, and they ought not to give him anything at all. They should say no, don't be ridiculous. You're not immune from anything. I mean, they will. You're, though. you're <laughs> yeah, of course they will because yeah. they know what side their bread is buttered. So and not that he's ever going to thank them for it. And what they're doing is laying down the law for generations to come. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they, 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 they did that. say that's that a few termist. times. Uh, Gorsuch said they're making a decision for the ages and Kavanaugh backed him up on that, so, and, which is absolutely not what they're supposed to be doing. They're, they're supposed to uh, no. look at the case in front of them um, yep. because the other hypotheticals that they raised there is no live case or controversy in front of the court to address yep. those issues but they are making an attempt to craft a law that will uh, that will deal with future issues as well which is yeah purely because that's the best way of of delaying this 
Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, what yeah. they yeah what they could do, and there is it's it potentially could still happen, but I don't think it will. It'd be very unlikely that it will. Is they could essentially dismiss this and and say yeah we we affirm the finding of the lower courts. Mm. Yeah. Um. You know the, the, easier, the appeals court decision is perfectly yep. fine. Um. Yeah. They could say that, and then it'll go down to the district court, and they can start the trial. I don't think yeah. that'll happen because that was the point of all this. Yeah. Yeah. And and that, that was the reason they got involved. Yeah. I mean, they, they could have done that in, in the first February. place. Yeah. Just go. No, we're not going to see that court. That case doesn't yeah. need to come up this far. Uh, well, you know, we can take solace in the fact that one day Trump will die. I think, yeah, but probably. we might, we we might, we might all die <laughs> in the process before he does, or in the process of his death, we he will take us with him, yeah, uh, in a nuclear explosion of some sort once mm. he's solved the secrets to, a, and then appealed the case because he'll go, oh, you're just you're just out to get me, persecuting me for stealing the, I got a loss of money. Some of which I might give to the tax man. So what if I gave our secrets to the Russians? That's uh, that's what Oppenheimer said we should have done. <laughs> yeah, I've just yeah. following through that. I've seen the movies. I understand. <laughs> oh, so uh, that's the end of <clears throat> yeah. that. And um, yeah, it could be the end of us. That's the, that's the, yeah, yeah well, it's the last we'll hear about it. I think until until the uh, decision comes through. Um, this yeah. obviously was is our is our Patreon bonus, but it's also a bonus that is appearing on the main feed because we wanted everyone to yeah. have kind of access to our um, glittering insight into this process. <laughs> and uh, um, if if you've noticed, and in the way that in the way that glitter. You know, kind of yeah, keeps yeah. turning up in all sorts of you know, unwanted orifices. If yeah, you've noticed that in places it might be a little bit more uh, <laughs> rambling and and less tightly edited uh, compared to our normal episodes, that's because typically with our off week episodes, the the bonus yeah. patron stuff, I I almost don't edit them at all, really. So I'll just chuck it out there. Yeah, yeah, just put it out there. So this and actually, is, and in this a way, is the kind of. Die rambly hesitant <laughs> stuff you could be getting it's if you joined hesitant. up to be uh, a patron it's not hesitant <laughs> it's just us attempting I say, to I do find say the I words to describe the the apocalyptic thing being presented to us i cut out a lot of hers uh in the main oh, okay main show right. So there's oh, a lot that, more well, errors in the bonus just, stuff. So if you want more well, yeah, errors, yeah, that's thinking time. That's what it is. It, it does is. show that we're actually thinking. Yeah. We're actually using our uh, brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm not. I'm not even cutting out the bit earlier where I said Act Two when I meant Article Two. So you know that's oh, okay. the kind that's of extra right, bonus I'm to go back stuff. And say it. You yeah, get. extra bonus behind the scenes thinking <laughs> of stuff that yeah. is, is we that we love so much. Yeah. So if if you've liked this free thing for, that we that normally is only exclusive to patrons <laughs> like I'm, I'm just kind of thinking how are we going to sell this so uh yeah if you kind of enjoyed the uh the the thoughtful nature <coughs> of this <coughs> i coughed in the most inappropriate moment there he gets very but upset when he's talking nature. about how thoughtful we are yeah <laughs> yes exactly yeah rather than just thoughtful very cough cough <laughs> yeah yeah rather than under undermine the idea of the fact that we're thoughtful by coughing at that moment <laughs> in a comedic way yeah so if you enjoy this this kind of uh the style with all the errors then there's a whole a, a plethora of a gamut of um Similar stuff hundreds of hours, at, I would say hundreds. Yeah, yeah, like, easily at least two hundred hours. hours. Yeah. Where we've looked at uh, books and movies and uh, Tucker Carlson and <laughs> talked about all sorts of things. Uh, we're in the middle of talking about Mary Trump's book and Dinesh D'Souza's police state documentary shaped film. So if you like, you can get if you join as a patron, um, you can sign up and get access to all that back catalogue of stuff yeah um and, and unusually we'll you we've done all sorts of movies that you've actually seen we've done two and to. two hours 40 minutes of of oral arguments in a in just over two hours in oh, this case that. so there normally yeah we we would be much more thorough <laughs> but you know yeah, we didn't want to yes, that's probably the we didn't want to waste your time on this 
No, um, but, yeah. but we're happy to waste not, your time. Not that we've wasted. We, we don't waste about... time when we're more thorough. <laughs> we don't, it doesn't lead to a waste of time. We're just more thorough. No, it's so, our own know, time we're wasting. It's, it's, <laughs> it's your own time you're wasting. Yeah, you've let yes, but worst of all, you <laughs> let, let ourselves down. down. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So for instance, if you've uh, wondered about the uh, the marvelous Michael Flatley film Blackbird, <laughs> we did we did talk about that in s- lots some of detail, great detail. Some detail, yeah. And we must be due for another screening of that. Bound to be. Anytime. <laughs> I kind of miss it. I kind of get itchy. It's a bit like. You know, when you, I haven't seen the sea for a while, uh-huh. I have to go look at the sea. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, you get blackbird withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. You have to go. It's very yeah. like the sea. I've gone, it makes co- me sick. I've got cold blackbird. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so join us uh, next week for more of uh, Fallacious Trump. Yep. And if you yep. if you feel like becoming a patron, then that would be great too. And you can join us for, for more of all kinds of different stuff. Um, and, and if you are a patron and you've listened to this, thanks again for being a patron. And uh, yeah, hope you don't mind us sharing this on the the occasion of our Too sixth bad if you do. birthday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sixth birthday is it? We've been doing this for six years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and as the Tony Blair election campaign sums it up in the song um, by uh, featuring Professor Brian Cox on keyboards, things <laughs> things can only get better. Can only get better. <laughs>